Hey guys, uh, Steve with Grim Coffee. Um, we just got a new little toy, Baratza Sete 270. Um, so this guy just came in. Uh, this is not a like retail model. This is basically just a review model for us to kind of take a look at. So we've been playing with it for a couple hours today. Um, basically what we have it for is just kind of play around, um, torture test it a little bit, make sure that, um, you know, it works properly and everything, and we can give her any feedback that we have to Baratza. But, um, you know, for the most part, it's pretty ready to go. This is the 270 version, not the W. So uh, this guy grinds by time instead of weight. I don't know. You probably can't really see the display that well here. Um, so we have a timer setting. This is five seconds. So just kind of going over some of the features that this grinder has. Um, we have three presets. Uh, so each has a different time setting. We've been playing around a little bit here. So I have five seconds, then I actually have two tenths of a second as sort of a pulse, and then 30 seconds, which is one of the ones that came out of the box. Um, you have a, a stop button, a play pause button, and then a timing adjustment to go up and down. So this is pretty similar to like the, the Vario uh, in, in that it's grinding by time um, pretty much the same exact way. Uh, you have full seconds and tenths of a second. Really, really easy to adjust on the fly. Really, really easy to, um, you know, if I wanted this to be like 35 seconds instead of 30, and I want to save that as a preset, same thing, just hold down the button for a couple seconds, it'll flash and save it into memory. Um, now, the grind adjustment is also really cool. Um, we have 31 settings, these are stepped settings. So you have this big adjustment collar here. Actually, I'm going to shut off the hopper and purge it first so I don't have to worry about this. But So it is, it's a little bit louder um, than some of the other Barazzas. It's not super loud. Um, you know, we have, a, we have an EK-43 here. I'd say the EK-43 is still louder, but it's, it is a little bit noisy for a home grinder. Um, that could certainly be helped if you were to place this. We have it on a, a kegerator right now, so it's actually a, a hollow steel surface below it, so that's going to have a little bit of resonance. But if you were to put it on uh, even just like a, like a rubber tamping mat like this or something, it could help kind of buffer the sound a little bit. But there is plenty of mo motor noise and gear noise from what's going on inside here, which I can show you in just a second. So... Uh, like I said, we have 31 settings on the step side of things, but then we also have a stepless adjustment down here for the, like the micro adjustment. So for something like espresso, uh, this actually works really well. Um, although I've found that for the Slayer that we have in the office here, we actually have to bottom it out. I'm, I'm at a one, and I was right between A and B when I was pulling shots uh, a little bit earlier today. So to kind of give you a look at the burrs here, I will twist the collar all the way over. There's actually a little um, a little peg here. There's a blue arrow and this little blue dot on the whole um, grind adjustment, which then just drops right out. I'll knock the little debris out of there. So hopefully you can see there's basically a central blur and then you pass all the way through with these little there's little veins inside there that kind of uh, declump the coffee a little bit and here just from the other side so the um, the center burr here the inner burr actually is fixed it's fixed in place it does not turn um, obviously uh, Baratza's sorry my, my camera is having a hard time with this focus I'll set this down um, so Baratza, their other grinders, the inner burr is attached to the motor or to a gear drive, and it will spin on its own. But now, I can't really show you here, but uh, it's probably just too dark to see. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, uh, now instead, the outer burr is actually spinning. There's a whole new um, mechanism that Baratza have, have uh, implemented here. Uh, where the motor is turning this whole gear drive mechanism that turns the outer burr. So you have this, and it's also, I mean, obviously sort of offset. You don't have this, 
you know, straight up and down body like the other Barazzas do. Uh, so the motor is somewhere back here, and the whole drive mechanism is in here. It turns the outer burr. So you have a straight path from the hopper down through the, uh, the little chute at the bottom, uh, which means that there's very, very little retention. Um, we've basically, you know, we've done a, a couple of tests here already, and even on an espresso, you're looking at less than one gram of retention, which is really, really remarkable. Um, you don't really see that in, uh, in home grinders all that much. Um, and even some of the higher end commercial grinders have trouble achieving the same thing. Let me put this guy back on. Basically all you have to do is line up again that blue tab and the blue arrow and then push in. Ugh, it's hard to do with one hand unfortunately. Yeah, let's see if I can get this. There we go. Uh, and then I'm going to actually spin it all the way back to that one so I'm set up to do shots again. Um, so this guy comes with a shutoff hopper. I, I flipped that earlier. But it comes with a shutoff hopper just like the Forte and the um, Barazza, or the Vario W rather. Um, so I'm just going to purge a little bit more. I'm going to throw it back in my five second preset. You don't really need to purge a whole lot, but um, I just kind of wanted to get that grind back where I wanted it. So the other cool thing here is this fork design. Uh, obviously it comes with this little bin. Um, but you can even fit, let's see, I have a V60 handy, the Kalita Wave. You can fit a Kalita Wave. It's a little bit tall for this, but if you were to put the filter in there, you could grind directly into it. Um, they've demonstrated it with uh, an Able Cone and a V60, so there's uh, a lot of things you can fit under the spouts here. But if you push in and then rotate, you can now, there's also this guy, push that down and rotate that into the center. These guys all lock into place where you want them. But when we do that, we can now take a porta filter and lock it right in. The Slayer, I think the Slayer porta filter, what's up, Verve? Um, the Slayer porta filter, I think, is a little bit big for this. Um, I'm not, actually, I haven't played around with it, and I don't really know, but this. Um, this little nut here might be adjustable, so we could maybe move this up and down. Um, cost, I don't know off the top of my head. I think this one, the 270, is like 350 or 400. Oh, there you go, three, 380. Um, so, yeah, under $400 is a little bit more expensive than, like, the Preciso, but definitely it's under priced under the Vario. Um, so, I think... Uh, Barazza is actually, I believe they're going to be phasing out the Preciso uh, in favor of the two Sete models, um, which aren't supposed to be a direct replacement, but it is a conical burr uh, grinder. They're a little bit different burrs than the Virtuoso and Encore, like that, that line of things. Um, but uh, I don't know, I, you know, time will tell and see how, how people really like this and how they... Uh, feel it, it fits in the whole sort of Barazza ecosystem. But um, anyway, I'm going to start, I'm just going to pull some shots real quick and we can uh, take a look. So I don't quite have this dialed in. I liked five seconds before, um, but I, then I switched coffees. I think this is about the same. <laughs> The one drawback with this Slayer port filter being so big is that it delivers, maybe you can kind of see, it delivers a little bit forward. Um, so my, the center of the uh, spout is like right here, which is just forward of center, um, which is no trouble really. Um, can Yeah, we're a little high there. I like about 21 grams for this, so I'm just going to scoop a little tiny bit off. 21 on the money. Oh, this is tough to do one-handed, but got my tamper. This guy's pretty cool too. This is the Malgut Palm Tamper. It's a, a little bit like the um, like the Push Tamper that came out a couple of years ago, but uh, these guys were actually going to get in pretty soon. They're made in Germany. Um, really nice product. Um, 
has a, like an adjustable base so you can change the depth. Um, I can't do it. I can't show it to you right now because I've only got one free hand, but basically you unscrew these two nuts and then just either tighten or loosen this um, and set it into wherever you want. So it's, um, I don't know, it's pretty cool, but that's another video I'm sure. This guy in. And we'll throw that. So I'm doing Slayer style shots. Um, so I do a, a pretty long pre-brew, about uh, 20 to 30 seconds, depending on what the saturation looks like. There we go. I'm gonna throw it over. This is perhaps a touch fast for what we want it, but you know, you're still looking at maybe like a 45 to 50 second shot total. And I'll probably actually um, throw back the lever a little bit as I approach 50 grams. Cut it there. So, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, probably not. So I have 17.7 seconds of pre-brew and 19.2 of full pressure. Um, it's a pretty good looking shot. It's a little on the thin side and I think it pulled a little bit fast. So this is probably going to be a little sharp. It's actually not too bad. Um, it's okay. Um, we were pulling shots with the same coffee. This is uh, David Buer's competition coffee from Greenway. And we were pulling shots with that yesterday and it got it really, really tasty. Um, it's from a nice like lime sweetness and acidity to it. Um, really, really quite tasty. Um, and thanks to Greenway for letting us have a big bag of that at SCA. Um, anyway, I'm going to, I think I'll take the grind a little tiny bit finer. Just rinse and stuff here. But, uh, you guys have any questions about the sete? Uh, obviously, we haven't had it for very long, but I'll be happy to kind of let you know what I know so far. I'm gonna take that guy a little tiny finer. Uh, I'm gonna actually purge just a little bit. There's not, again, there's not a whole lot of retention. We're, I mean, I've, I've looked at basically about one gram or less, even on espresso when it kind of gets clumpy. And that's largely thanks to that straight pass-through design. Um, there just really isn't any place for coffee to collect and stay put. Um, so you don't really need to purge that much. Uh, I, I kind of, I feel like it's more of a force of habit just for me, you know, working on something like the, the mythos or, or what have you. You know, I, I feel like whenever I make espresso adjustments, I want to purge. So I'm not entirely sure that I really even need to. Uh, so here we go, another dose. <laughs> Um, and so earlier, uh, I was getting about four grams per second, uh, grinding on like exactly, you know, the finest uh, set to a one in like between A and B. So that's really, really fast for uh, a small home espresso grinder. Uh, the range for filter, this is basically a full range grinder. Uh, 31 over here on the left is pretty coarse. Uh, it is not the coarsest like French press setting I've ever seen, but it's it's on the coarser side of like medium so you basically go from espresso fine to uh, a pretty medium coarse so like something that would be suitable for a larger batch brew uh, so if you're doing a full chemex you could do a full chemex uh, you know like almost two liters of coffee as well as espresso on the same grinder um, and I know you know with Bratz's previous grinders they've done um, They've had like calibration, recalibration screws and, and mechanisms inside of them. So I actually haven't talked to them about that with this grinder. And I'm not sure if they do have a calibration, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's there. So you could actually push the range one way or the other if you wanted to. Um, again, I'm not positive about that, but I I think it's a safe assumption to make based on Baratza's other products. So actually here, yeah, we go. We're right around 21 grams. 
just settle that guy. Tamper, tamper. So again, I took that just a little bit finer. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have any range left on the coarse side of things. There we go. Kick that up. So yeah, it's still a little bit faster than I'd like. You know, the, it, I don't think that's necessarily a knock against the sete. I think that's basically just kind of par for the course with working with a Slayer. You really have to grind a lot finer than normal when it comes to pulling these shots. Um, I'm going to cut this right into 52 again. Uh, 21 to 52 has been tasting really pretty good with this coffee. We've got a nice, a nice crema on there. It's a little thin because... <laughs> I would choke it if I could. I probably have to put a lot more coffee in the basket, but I'm having... Uh, because it comes out so fluffy, I'm having problems where if I were to do a higher dose, like 22 or 23 grams, um, it would probably start to fall out of the basket as it's being um, dispensed. Yeah, this one's still a little on the bright side. I think it just needs a little bit more, more time on it, a little bit more extraction on it. Um, it's pretty close. It's not a terrible shot, but it's just, yeah, it's a little, it's a little on the bright side, and it could use a little bit more sweetness to it. It basically tastes like um, you'd taken like a, a decently balanced shot of espresso and then squirted a, a little bit of lime juice in it. So it's just a little too bright. All right, let's see if we can choke it. Josh says choke it, so we're gonna choke it. I feel like instead of latte art throwdowns, we should have like one-handed barista competitions. <laughs> try and try uh, grind, tamp, pull shots, clean up, steam milk, all with one hand. I need a demi tasse here. even finer. That's as fine as we can go on both sides. So I'll purge a little bit. Alright, here's what I'll do. I will go to my five seconds. I'm going to grind about half of it and then pause it. And I'm gonna just tap to settle. finish up and then I'll pulse a little bit more. There. Looks pretty good. Let's see. What do we have? Almost 25 grams. Uh, I'm going to uh, shove it down just to 24. Oops. There. Well, we're at 24.1, but that should be okay. My tamper is not going to go all the way down now, but see there's a little bit of a gap. I need to reset that, but yeah, she won't compact much more than that. But I'm using a 22 gram VST basket, so I got plenty of headspace in here. I should be using a smaller basket for the doses that we usually do, but uh, we've misplaced our old 18 grammer. So this hopefully should take a little bit longer on the uh, the pre-brew. I think it was around 15 to 16 seconds last time. No, we're actually kind of keeping pace. It's only about a second or so. We're at 17.5 seconds for the pre-brew. But now the flow rate is much more restricted. It's also a little, a little lopsided. Yeah. 
we're, we've got a, a little bit of a donut extraction here, unfortunately. But we do have a much longer extraction. So that was 24 grams. I guess I'm going to take it to like 60. Let's see how that tastes. Full demitasse. So here's the thing that has nothing to do with uh, the sete, but this has everything to do with um, pulling shots. Like this is this is basically why I'm an av advocate for pulling shots with scales. That is 60 grams in a demitasse right now, but that is a 2.5 ounce end cap demitasse. If you were to say, uh, let's pull, you know, two ounces in uh, 25 seconds or something like that, you'd fill it just a little a little less than this. Um, but you could be anywhere from like 30 grams to 60 grams, depending on how you're pulling your coffee. Isn't that crazy? Like there's so much variation. I know a lot of people really love to simplify their, their workflows and, you know, uh, not use so much equipment on their bar and just kind of, you know, rely a little bit more on their, on their senses, like, you know, going by looks or, or going by feel, um, but I think, you know, going by taste and using a scale is probably the best way to go about it because there's so much variation, even just with espresso. Uh, or espresso. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I like to have data. I don't, you know, if, if somebody's like, you know, oh, I just don't want to scale because I like to go by feel and the, the coffee tastes fine to me. I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, you know, the coffee's not going to necessarily taste better just because you've used a scale. But if you're finding you're having consistency issues uh, or you switch coffees a lot, I do advocate using a scale because, you know, coffee can be so different, you know, from, from batch to batch or uh, even just recipe to recipe. Um, 60 grams in a, in a demi test right now, and it's not overflowing or anything. It's, it's pretty remarkable. Of course, this coffee is like three weeks old now, so it's not very gassy. Wow, that bumped the sweetness way up. It still has that, um, it still has that like lime juice kind of character to it, but very very tasty. Um, not quite where I would want it, but if I were to mix that with like just a little bit of milk, like a cortado, that'd be a, a really tasty short drink. All right, I'll leave that guy there. Um, unfortunately, I can't take it any finer, and I don't really want to increase the dose that much, so. I guess I need a different espresso machine, <laughs> uh, which I don't have, or maybe a smaller basket. I'm not sure. But uh, anyway, so that's the that is the sete pulling shots on a Slayer. We're using um, a Guatemala roasted by Greenway Coffee for David Buer's uh, USBC routine. Um, very very good stuff. Very high quality coffee. Super super tasty. Um, and the sete pulls shots, you know, pretty darn well. Again, I think, you know, if there is a calibration screw in this machine, um, I would probably want to set the range a little bit finer. But other than that, it's been, it's been working like a champ so far. Uh, we've had it for all of uh, six hours <laughs> or so today, and uh, we've been having a lot of fun with it so far. Um, but um, so I'm actually going to take this guy home this weekend, and... Um, play with it a little bit more. Uh, I have a La Pavoni that I use at home, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that, pull some shots there. Um, that's a 49 millimeter portafilter basket, so it's much, much smaller um, and not quite as demanding as the Slayer, but looking at the grind and looking at the consistency that we have coming out of this, I think that uh, it should work pretty darn well. Um, I've got a Preciso at home as well, so I'm gonna kind of play with them head to head and see who pulls the better shots. and. Got a, got a feeling it's going to be the sete, but um, I don't know. That should be fun, and I'll, I'll do some brewed coffee as well. Um, so I'll uh, I'll probably post some pictures or something to Prima Coffee. Um, definitely post pictures to my own social media stuff. But, um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have more to come on this guy for sure. Um, I think we're going to start shooting some videos next week uh, to do, you know, full overviews. Um, I would also like to do a breakdown just to kind of open it up and, you know, take a look and see – what exactly makes this guy work? What makes him tick on the inside? Um, so yeah, uh, if you guys have any anything that you want to see, you know, um, brew experiments or grind consistency, we're gonna try and cover all the bases here because it's a brand new grinder, obviously, and a lot of people are very excited to see what um, or how it performs and um, you know 
where it measures up uh, within the, bar the Barazza line, but also against other grinders. So we'll try and compare it to what we can. Um, you know, we've got a, a pretty nice selection of grinders here in our break room. You know, we've got an EK43, we've got a Kenya, we've got a Mythos. Um, you know, those are some pretty heavy hitters in terms of commercial grinders, but we've also got the home grinders as well that we keep in stock. So we'll, um, you know, we'll do some comparisons. We'll probably even compare it to like the Lido 3, um, so people can see how that uh, measures up against a, you know, a really nice hand grinder that's uh, less than half the cost. <laughs> or, oh no, actually right around half the cost, I guess. Um, so yeah, um, just, you know, hit us up on Twitter or wherever. Um, let us know what you want us to do and we'll do it for you. Um, anyway, thanks guys. I'm going to call it quits for the day and we will see you later.